Bonus fact, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is traditionally said to hold 1,000 gold coins. If they each weighed an ounce, that pot would be worth about one and a quarter million US dollars. Two and a half mil if it's a double rainbow. What does this mean? Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts. In this installment, we're counting down the five most surprising facts we could find about St. Patrick's Day. Uh, Barney, we, uh, we talked this over and uh, we're not doing St. Patty's Day this year. <laughs> Come on, let's... Are you... <laughs> Slow. Number five. St. Patrick wasn't Irish, and he wasn't called Patrick. My whole life is a lie. He was actually British, and was originally named Maywin Sukkot. St. Patrick was only known as Patrick once he'd become a priest, and the only reason he traveled to Ireland in the first place was because he'd been kidnapped. Cursed pirates sail these waters. At around 16 years old, young Maywin was taken by pirates from his native home of either Scotland or more probably Wales, and sold into Irish slavery. He spent six long years herding sheep in the Irish countryside before escaping back to Britain and reuniting with his parents. Next, he trained with the church and achieved priesthood, before a godly calling summoned him back to the Emerald Isle, where he traveled the countryside teaching Christianity and converting thousands. Prepare to receive the true Lord! And the rest really is history, except for one part. Number four, there were never any snakes in Ireland. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? A popular St. Paddy's Day legend says that the patron saint of Ireland is the reason why the country doesn't have any snakes. Supposedly, St. Patrick chased every single serpent into the sea and banished them forever after snakes attacked him during a 40-day fast he was undertaking on a hilltop. However, science says that this myth is exactly that, a myth. It's all bullshit, all of it. All evidence suggests that post-glacial Ireland never played host to snakes or any reptiles. More likely, the story is a metaphor, and Patrick's snakes were, in fact, some of Ireland's more undesirable people, or his ideological rivals. Number three, it's not traditional to drink beer. Today, beer is probably the second most synonymous thing with St. Patrick's Day, behind Ireland itself. On average, between 11 and 13 million pints of Guinness are consumed worldwide on March 17th, and a 2012 study found the day to be worth over $245 million to the international brewing industry. But no matter how many stouts we drink nowadays, getting drunk is not a Paddy's Day tradition. Dude! <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, make it two bottles. Pubs weren't even allowed to be opened in Ireland on that day until 1970, when St. Patrick's Day was converted from a religious to a national holiday. The date has always been a feast day, however, with significance because St. Patrick's falls during Lent, a day of merriment during a staunch period of fasting. It's the first glimpse of gluttony on the Christian calendar since Shrove Tuesday's pancakes. Number two, St. Paddy's might be more American than Irish. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. 34 million Americans claim Irish heritage, which is about five times the population of Ireland itself. First observed in Boston in 1937, by the 1800s it had become a regular affair. New York City is famous for its quarter million strong marching parade, which has been held since 1762, and Chicago is well known for dyeing its river green, a custom also carried out at the White House Fountain since 2009. There's another particularly peculiar presidential tradition as well. Every year since 1952, the Irish leader presents the US Commander-in-Chief a crystal bowl of shamrocks and the pair then pose for photos. Though the president can keep the crystal, the shamrocks themselves are promptly destroyed as per security procedures. Number one, we should be wearing blue. All right, laugh all you want, but this is my lucky St. Paddy's Day suit. If you've been watching this video with your mind's eye firmly tinted to green, then you've been watching it all wrong. Historically speaking, St. Patrick's was a very blue day. No, no! Unacceptable! That's so not Raven! There's even a shade of color named after the saint, which is used on Ireland's presidential standard and as part of the Irish Guard's uniform. The association of St. Paddy's with green only began in the late 1700s and the Irish Rebellion. At that time, the clover became a nationalist symbol, and green emerged as the patriotic color of choice. Today, a well-read reveler might tip their hat to tradition, but the vast majority of us go all out emerald. Besides, blue beer just seems... Well, about as weird as green beer, actually. You're told, I know you're gonna love it. You know what? It's green beer. For your information. So, what do you think? Will you start wearing blue in the sea of green? Or would you rather not be that guy? 
For more widely celebrated top 10s and immediately destroyed top 5s, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Let's drink green beer. Let's do green jello shots. Where's your St. Patty's Day spirit? We're drinking green tea. With caffeine.